is the John W. Jones Museum in Elmira, New York. I am J.D. Isles and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. So today we are at the John W. Jones Museum and this is actually a relatively new museum for Elmira. Right now it is run by volunteers and by donations, but eventually over on this lot next to us, they hope to have a John W. Jones education center. For nearly 20 years, flowers would mysteriously appear on the grave of a woman named Sarah Smith. Nobody knew where the flowers were coming from or who was tending to the grave, but then mysteriously around 1900, the flowers stopped coming. The person who was placing those flowers on Sarah Smith's grave was John W. Jones. This John W. Jones, who died on December 26, 1900. Sarah Smith and her husband Nathaniel had a farm on the New York Pennsylvania border. On a night on or before July 4th, their peaceful country life got a little more interesting when five runaway slaves decided to sleep in their barn. A lot of things could have happened that night, but what did happen was Sarah Smith invited those men in for a dinner of biscuits and gravy and let them get a good night's sleep. On July 5th, Jones crossed a toll bridge into Elmira, New York after having stayed at the Smith Farm that evening. Once in Elmira, Jones found employment. Through his hard work, Jones quickly became an important member of the local community. In 1847, he became the sexton of First Baptist Church in Elmira, where he was caretaker of the church's cemetery, a position he held for 42 years. Now, John W. Jones also had a side job, and that side job was conductor of the Underground Railroad. Jones arranged transportation for fugitive slaves on the Freedom Baggage Car at 4 a.m. on the Williamsport and Elmira Railroad. He was very successful at this. Ultimately, he helped over 800 slaves escape. That is probably a lifetime of good works for a normal person. However, John W. Jones was no normal person. And over the course of basically a year, he buried over 3,000 Confederate soldiers in Woodlawn Cemetery. Now, he showed an extraordinary amount of compassion to combatants that would have seen him return to the South as a slave. The norm in burying prisoners during the Civil War was unfortunately mass graves. John Jones made sure that every single one of those Confederate soldiers had an individual coffin. Uh, they all had a wooden headstone, a uh, wooden headstone, and additionally their name, rank, and regiment was written not only on the headstone and the coffin, but also on a small slip of paper that would have been put inside a jar and either tucked under their arm or tied around the neck. There are lessons that John W. Jones is still waiting to teach us if we just listen hard enough. Thank you very much for joining me. I am J.D. Isles. This is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks, and I will see you next week.